Hello and welcome to another edition of Barrister in a Balaclava. This will be a short one um, because I've realised that, um, that I haven't said much about, uh, about one of the first subjects that a law student will be studying in a university or law school, which is the law of theft. And the, one of the first things you'll be taught about the, is the definition of theft. And uh, it, I, me I remember myself trying to learn off by heart the definition. Now, this is about 40 years ago I learned it, and I think it went like this. Uh, theft is the um, appropriation, dishonest appropriation, of property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving that other of it. Now that's from 40, and I, I may have got that wrong, in which case I apologise to all of you, but I think I've got it more or less right. And um, the key thing there is that, as I said in one of our early videos, theft was a, was a common law offence in the old days. It was then codified in the Theft Act 1967, I think it was, um, to become a statutory, a statutory offence, or at least... Uh, there was statute uh, enacted the existing law, as it was at the time, of theft. So you have these requirements of it being the appropriation that's taking away from one person of his or her property, that belongs to another, with the intention of permanently depriving them of that property. You have to have dishonesty. So if I take my next door neighbour's um, uh, lawnmower to mow my lawn, I'm not being dishonest. And also, I, I mean to give it back to him. It's not permanent. So you couldn't charge me with theft. Um, likewise, if I borrow somebody's pen at work to write a, a card or, 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 or a letter to somebody, they can't find it for an hour, no one's going to charge me with theft because I haven't acted dishonestly, I've just simply borrowed it, I meant to give it back. Now the difficulty came in the definition of theft when people started going joyriding. And now you may have heard, those of you who watch criminal cases and, and crown court cases on TV, uh, something called a twocker. TWOC, taking without owner's consent. You may wonder why that, that exists, because surely they just simply stole the car. Well, they didn't. Because joyriders don't steal. They simply take the car for a joyride. They leave it in a the field. They don't want to keep it. You see the problem? They haven't permanently sought to disrupt, de deprive the owner of their car. They mean to just take it for a while, leave it in the field, the owner will get it back. What's the problem? Where's the harm? So in order not to allow there to be uh, this sort of defence to charge of theft for jo against joyriders, the law was brought in that you can be done for taking without the owner's consent, a twocker. That's an example, going back to the first, um, well, my first videos where I spoke about common law and the interaction between common law and statute law, of how a statute has to intervene to supplement the common law, even as codified in the Theft Act, to, to recognise offences that are taking place which are not covered by the earlier um, common law um, as codified definition in the statutes. And that's a good example which I should have mentioned earlier, but those of you, when you have your, um, your crime class and you have this topic come up, you'll know how and why twockers came into existence because they weren't covered by the Theft Act because there was no intention permanently to deprive the owner of their vehicle, just to borrow it. That's all I want to talk about for now. Um, much more to follow in due course. Um, if you enjoy this video or if you wish to subscribe, there are buttons below either here or there. I don't quite know which side it's on. So click on one of those buttons, the one that says subscribe, not the one that says do not like. That's not what we want. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.